Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Karen Marsdale, President of the Greater Reading Chamber of Commerce, and you're here for another edition of Member Spotlight. And I am thrilled today to have Nick Johnson um, from TEM Care Behavioral Health. And Nick, welcome. Oh. Welcome. It's great to, to have you on board as a chamber member, okay. and it's great to talk a little bit about your, um, your program. And you know, it's something that I think many people um, certainly know about um, the, the world of autism, but mm -hmm. maybe they don't have a complete understanding of the spectrum mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and the services, services that are more and more available today than they were um, years ago. So talk to me first about um, what the organization is. I know you were founded in um, 2015. Sure. Um, and a fully qualified provider of services in Pennsylvania. Um, so talk about this. Okay, well first off, thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure and this building is nice. Oh, <laughs> it's lovely to be in downtown <laughs> Reading here yeah. at the People Chronicles. That's right. <laughs> so basically TEMCARE stands for Teaching, Educating, and Mentoring. So that's okay. where the acronym is. Okay, so know, it's an acronym. From. Very good, so okay. that's what we do. Uh, specifically, we work with adults with autism okay. through the Adult Autism Waiver uh, from okay. the state of Pennsylvania. So it's a specific niche that we have okay. in population that we work with. Now, how you get involved in the waiver is you have to be over 21, okay. which would require an adult, and then there's paperwork. Mm -hmm. So once you submit that paperwork, then the state would say, okay, you're approved to receive those type of services. Like you mentioned, the backlog is tremendous. Sure. So what ends up happening is there's a lot of folks uh, on the waiver that it takes two to three years Ooh, just wow. to, to get into To get services. Program. Correct. Oh, wow. That's, so it's, that, that, I'm sure that's a challenge for, for you folks every day then. Well, it's for the potential participants. So mm -hmm. what happens with me, my phone rings all the time, mm -hmm. simply because what we do is we, my home office is in Berks County here at the Berks Community Foundation. Okay. So that's where my office is. So say you take the Berks County and as the crow flies, you go an hour and a half, we service seven different counties. Wow, wow. Services, okay. so we travel. So I always tell my staff to travel lightly <laughs> because what we do is out on the road. Right. So that way we can reach a lot of uh, potential clients that we can work with. Okay, okay. The specific services that we provide, we work with ones with the behavioral issues, community support, skill building, and therapy okay. and respite service. So it's a, again, it's a specific. The reason why we focus that, a lot of my staff, our background was in mental health. Mm -hmm. So that's where we came up through. So what ends up happening is you have a lot of analytical folks who mm -hmm. want the data. However, what we do is we deal what I like to call where the rubber meets the road. The actual behaviors, not everybody's equipped to do that. Sure. But because of my background in mental health, mm -hmm. uh, we're equipped to, to handle the hiccups, I like to call, that sure. come up. So um, now when you say you're on the road and your staff is on the road, where are you actually meeting the patients? Well, what happens is the clients, or clients. you meet them at their residence, okay, ninety-five percent, and keep in mind, are adults, right? That, that you're working right, with, right? So you're so in the adult population as opposed to the student population. Correct. So that you have a lot of autonomy and flexibility, simply right. because you could meet at the home, you could meet at a place where you can mutually agree, but it's to help them, give them the skills to be successful in the community. Sure. So it's not just staying at home. So years ago. There was a sect that dealt with mental health and mm -hmm. our folks who they didn't understand the diagnosis. They wanted to lock them away and, and put them away, which quite frankly, we learn from the clients just as much as we teach them. Sure, absolutely, uh, so absolutely. You know, I think there probably isn't as, I mean, it's, it's something, um, you know, autism, um, while it's something I'm sure that people struggled with for years, there really wasn't a diagnosis or a name so that people could start to get the, the help and the assistance that is, is evident today that's out there. 
Correct, you're 100% correct. So to your point, if we don't have a label for it, then we put them in this basket that we don't know. But right. it's unfortunate because the services that they might need, they're not getting. But right. now the awareness is going kind of 180 degrees, full circle, yeah. so we're aware. And I still think that there is um, um, more need for awareness of autism Correct. and that, that there's a spectrum as Correct. well. Um, you know, and I'm talking what I know, you could put in a thimble, mm -hmm. but I do know um, my daughter's a guidance counselor, so okay. um, she often talks about, you know, some of the behavioral um, challenges and, you know, how you need to understand um, that things are, that we're moving in the right direction at least with more um, services and also more understanding and more diagnoses. Correct, and quite frankly, and you can share this with your daughter, which she already knows, a lot of it times it's a dual diagnosis. It's not just autism as sure. a standalone. There might be something else involved. So where some folks, again, they don't understand. So now, but what happens with the population we're working with, they might have been with their caretakers. Some of them, they've been living with their parents. They're 27, 28 years old. Sure. Mom and dad are tired. Sure. Mom and dad aren't going to be here forever. Right. So right. there's also Good point. a concern, does the client or participant have the skill set where they can be self-sufficient, independent, mm -hmm. and live on their own? Well, who's going to work with them? Right. So we've been very successful with some of our participants slash clients getting them out on their own. Now, when they get out and have their apartment for the first time, there is a lot of support that they need, but it's just fantastic. Mom and dad are relieved. Oh, uh, sure. Participant is relieved, scared, and nervous, mm -hmm. like most would be. But then that's where we're there to really say, okay, we got to start from scratch. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, can you um, can you share some of the sort of the great stories that you might have of a client um, or participant who has, you know, where you've take where you where you've. I would imagine sometimes parents are a little bit. Um, um, protective mm -hmm. and so you've had to kind of deal with you know overprotective or protective mom and dad or sure. mom or dad and or other other family members and then they're at the end they see wow this is a great great um, opportunity what makes us special and I say that in all due respect no to no some I'm glad you're saying that providers a lot of the clients that I get I either get them to the two ends of the spectrum for lack of a better term the one is that they're brand new into the waiver, so mm -hmm. we'll get them brand new. Or two, we, have, we get a lot of the clients who were with other providers and they weren't happy. Okay. See, what happens is if, the, if a, a participant or client chooses a provider and they work with them, and then they leave and they say, well, we're unhappy. So a lot of times my phone will call, ring. Okay. Because now, but here's where again, it's our strength and I'll continue to say that to those who wanna listen and we have a proven track record because we come with the clinical piece. Okay, Where okay. a lot of my competitors or other providers, they're not as strong okay. in the clinical piece. So for an example, say you were supposed to meet a client at 10 o'clock you don't arrive at 10 o'clock. That client's upset. Even if you come at 10.01, 10.05, sure. so they can have a meltdown. Right. So now how do you deal with that? So right. how do you get past that and move forward? Uh, say for an example, I've gone to a resident where someone took a CD and took it out of sorts, didn't ask the participant, could they use it? Participant comes home, well, now the CD has been rearranged. They're not happy. Mm -hmm. So now how do you deal with that on the spot? Sure. So there's a lot of dealing with where, again, where the rubber meets the road issues that you can help them yeah. process. Okay, this is what happened. How do we make it better in order to move forward? And I would imagine that you really do. You and your staff have to be very um, qualified to sure. be able to, it just doesn't happen overnight because you've got to be able to see some of the signs, you've got to be able to understand where the client is coming from and then how to react to that um, in order to make, 
for a positive outcome. That's correct. And, and what I always tell the staff, we got to meet the client where they are. Sure. Oh, so sure. What ends up happening is some of the supporters who might have applied for the waiver for the participant, they want a quick fix. Oh, so sure. what I say to them, first of all, the participant didn't get this way overnight, so it's going to take time. However, right. because when we come in with our approach, which is positive reinforcement, mm -hmm. mistakes are going to happen. They're not going to be perfect. But let's not take a little uh, molehill and make it into a mountain. Right, right, you know, exactly. The sun's going to come up tomorrow. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> and will this, this particular incident matter in five years? Probably not. Correct. Well, I know we're running out of time because this is a very, very interesting um, and I think it's a um, really meaningful topic because I think folks still, you know, lay people don't know as much as they probably should. And, um, and I think we're just being um, provided with more information more and more these days um, through educators like yourself. And um, so one, one last time, tell our audience what makes your organization, it just sounds like you do, do such a one-on-one, um, -on -one, customize your working one client at a time. Correct. Um, but you say it and tell oh. them why you think that's the case. Okay. Again, one of the things, I want to again thank you for oh, your time. Oh, it's my pleasure. Staff here has been great. One of the things I like for people to know is TEMCARE, which the acronym is Teaching, Educating, and Mentoring. That's what we do and we do it well. Uh, my staff, we come from the clinical part of the business. For an example, I have a behavioral specialist license, so that's licensure that goes along with what it is that we do. Uh, a lot of our background has come from the mental health field, so we're able to help the folks from the ground up and help provide the supports that they're going to need in order to be successful and for them to live independently out in the real world. Wow, that's, one, that's a wonderful story. Um, thank you for doing the work you do. I really appreciate that. Um, it. Uh, I'm sure it takes just a very special person, people who are bright, but people who are very dedicated and passionate. So thank you for the work you do, Nick. It's great to, it's great to meet you. Well, same here, and thanks for having me. Oh, no, it's my pleasure. <laughs>